Thank you for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to go through the need to knows to help you learn how to TIG weld. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, just giving you the basics so you can go off and practice in your own way. For me, TIG welding has become a career, a hobby, an interest, and something I get a lot of joy out of because believe me, the satisfaction you get from laying down that perfect rainbow color TIG weld is something which everyone tries to pursue. So let's get into it, let's show you how it's done and help you learn. This is where we all want to be, but before we get to a point where we can do that Instagram worthy world to be proud of, you need to know the basics and take the time to practice. So I said we're going to start from the absolute basics. The first thing you are going to need is a decent TIG set. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be a top of the line model like an ESAB or Miller or something similar. You just need a good reliable TIG set. There are plenty out there. And you'd be surprised about how much, how little you can get them for nowadays. Go on eBay, go on Amazon, there's plenty on there. And that's exactly what I've got, which I'm going to introduce to you now. And here is my welder. I use a Stalwork 200 amp DC TIG welder. And I can tell you it's about £400 UK. I got this from Amazon. They are also on eBay, or you can buy them directly from the Stalwork website himself. Now, I am in no way connected to Stalwork. But I can tell you this is a damn fine machine which I can highly recommend. It's worth a look. This model is a DC only. You can get them with AC and DC. AC being for welding aluminium. But for this video we are going to concentrate on welding steel only on DC. As aluminium is much more complex. But that will be covered in a future video. This machine has a lot of neat features. But we are going to keep it simple and focus on the amps only, which adjusts the power of our weld. All the other features I'll go over in a future video where I'll review my welder. You simply turn the dial for more amps or less amps. How many amps you will need depends on the thickness of the material you will be welding. If you are going to weld, you are going to need gas. No, 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 not that kind of gas. 100% pure argon. You could also use helium or argon helium mix. Pure Argon is cheaper and it works just fine. Whatever you do, do not use MIG welding gas because put simply, it will not work and it will make your welds look horrible. Top tips I can give you, when you turn your gas bottle on, turn the gas bottle tap on all the way open. That is pretty important, don't just crack it open thinking it will be okay, you won't get a smooth flow of gas. Also, set your flow meters to around about 8 to 10 litres per minute. That gives you a good gas coverage. You can always fine tune it if you need to. Another little tip, always remember to turn your gas bottle off at the end of your working day or whatever you're doing. There is nothing worse than getting a full bottle of gas, turning it on, doing your thing, going home, next day it's empty. It's expensive, it's frustrating, it's annoying. So look after your gas, use it correct, use the right stuff. The gas connects to the back of the TIG welder like so. Let's now turn our attention towards something else which is quite important, and that is the TIG torch itself. These are all the parts of the TIG torch. We have the back cap, which screws into the back of the torch. The collet holds the tungsten. The tungsten is what gives us our arc. At the front of the torch goes either a gas lens or a collet body. The difference is the gas lens gives more coverage as rather than drilled holes which we see in the collet body which are there the gas on the gas lens is distributed through a metal gauze at the front here which creates a much smoother gas flow and much less turbulence. At the front of the collet body or your gas lens goes your cup or ceramic, which are these. These come in different sizes depending on what you are welding or maybe you're in a tight spot. The smallest one here is a size 5, that is a size 6 and that is a size 8. As you go bigger the number gets higher. I am using ceramic cups. You can get cool looking glass cups. The advantage is they are see-through which can help in a tight spot and they look awesome but it is optional, it's not necessary. Having said that I've got some glass cups in order 
just because, no justification, they're cool. That is it. Okay, so let's put the TIG torch together. So here is our assembled TIG torch. I've used a number eight ceramic or cup and I've used the gas lens. Now the tungsten is protruding out of the cup around about a quarter of an inch to half inch away from the actual opening itself. How far you stick out the tungsten depends on various things. Generally speaking, I stick the tungsten out about a quarter of an inch, sometimes tighter. If you're welding something in a tight spot, you may have a tungsten coming out a bit further, but generally speaking, around about a quarter of an inch of protrusion does most things. On this particular torch, the gas comes directly at the negative terminal through the hose to the TIG torch. So the negative terminal is here, it will connect it up. And although you can't see it, there is a hole on this terminal where the argon gas comes out and it travels up the tube straight through to the TIG torch. The more simple TIG torches have a simple manual knob on the torch which you manually turn on and off to initiate your gas. And one thing you absolutely must know is the polarity of where to connect your earth and where to connect your TIG torch. Always connect your earth to the positive terminal and always connect your TIG torch to the negative terminal. If you get this the other way around, when you start your arc, your tungsten will burn back to your torch and put simply, it will not work. You connect it the other way around for stick welding, but for TIG welding, earth is positive torch is negative always a key you need to know is your tungsten the tungsten is a super hard type of metal which transmits the welding arc from your torch to your metal and it's heat resistant up to many thousands of degrees I'm not sure what the exact figure is but it takes a lot of heat and carries your arc and melts your metal so there are different types of tungsten we need to know about and they're categorized by the color on the tip on the end here there are different types suitable for different amps, settings, AC, DC, all are categorised by a colour on the tip. So here we have a white one which is suitable for aluminium, DC. And here we have a gold one, gold tip, which we are going to use for the welding we are doing today. Gold is quite a good useful all round of AC, DC and any more so I use it pretty much for everything. Here is a little table to show you the different types of colour, the different categories, different settings and also different amps according to different diameters. I'm not going to go through all, through all this in great detail. I'll give you this information here so you can learn a bit more in your own time. Oh, this will be a very, very long video. For this video, I'm going to use a 2.4mm or 532 diameter gold tip tungsten as it works well for DC. Now, one thing you will do when you learn how to weld is this tungsten needs to be sharpened to a fine point to transmit the arc. You are going to be touching down quite a lot and you will need to sharpen these quite a lot. Don't be disheartened by that. It's all part of learning, and with practice, it will get better and better, but you do need sharpness to a point to transmit your arc, and let's go into why and how, and how do we do it. The easiest way to sharpen your tungsten for DC welding is by using a bench grinder. The ideal is use a specialist tungsten sharpener, but they are expensive. So done correctly, a bench grinder works just fine. Do not sharpen your tungsten side on to the grinding stone like this. You will create swell marks on your tip, causing an unstable erratic arc, which will not help you. Hold your tungsten straight upright to the stone, so all the grind lines run straight along the point. This will give you a much more stable arc. Continuously rotate the tungsten in your fingers as well, to ensure you get a nice even sharpened point. Hold the tungsten when sharpening between your fingers like this. Never hold it with your finger underneath because if it snags, it will go through and it will hurt a lot. Ouch. The length of your taper should be around about twice the diameter of your tungsten. On our 2.4mm tungsten, we have about 5mm of taper. 
This is how a sharpened tungsten should look in your TIG torch with the appropriate stick out. So, how do we strike an arc when we TIG weld? There are three methods. There is the lift arc, the strike and the remote. The lift arc is when you get your torch, you touch down your base metal, then you hold your torch by lifting it a quarter of an inch above your base metal, you will have an arc between the base metal and your tungsten. At this point you can start TIG welding in the usual fashion and that arc will remain until you pull away. So you have to physically break the arc by removing the torch and the base metal. The other method is the strike start. This is where you have to physically strike your torch against the base metal to initiate the arc. There is a bit of a knack to this because if you're not careful and you don't do it quick enough your TIG torch or your tungsten will stick to your base metal. If that happens you will need to sharpen your tungsten not fun, quite annoying. If you stick weld and you know what it's like in your stick rod sticks to your base metal, you will know how frustrating that is. Not good. With remote start, and that is the preferred method, there's two ways of doing this. You may have a button on your TIG torch, or you may have a foot pedal. The way it works is in the, in the welding machine, you have a coil which then provides power to your tungsten. When you press the button or touch the foot pedal, a, a arc goes from your, t your tungsten to the base metal and creates a spark like a spark plug. That allows the current, the amperage, to go from your TIG torch straight to your base metal without you ever needing to touch the base metal. Now this is great because it completely eliminates the need to touch down your tungsten against the metal. It eliminates the possibility of, ru of ruining your tungsten by touching the base metal itself. It's much smoother, it's much much more controlled. With a finger button, you press the button, the arc starts, you take your finger off, the arc goes away. You don't need to pull away, it's all good. With a foot pedal, similar sort of thing, you put your foot in the pedal, your arc starts. The biggest advantage of foot pedal is, like a foot pedal in a car, the harder you put your foot down, the more power you have. So you have a lot more variability, a lot more control, it is much better. And certainly for aluminium, it is definitely, definitely a good idea. We're going to use a foot pedal throughout my video. But the, cheap, the, the more cost-effective TIG sets may have a strike stock or a lift arc. It all works, but it just takes a bit of practice. But as I said previously, if you can afford a remote-controlled start, it is definitely the way forward. Another feature to note is post-gas flow. This is a definite need to know. As we weld, the argon gas shields our weld. But when we stop, the weld pool remains molten for a few seconds. If we just pulled away, the end of our weld would go black and get a porosity because it is exposed to oxygen. So we have to use post gas, which simply is holding the torch over the end of the weld with gas flowing for a few seconds to cool the tungsten and cool the end of the weld. My machine has a post flow timer, which is great, but if your machine has a manual gas valve, just hold the torch over the end of the weld for a few seconds before turning off. Another question you may ask is, how do I hold the TIG torch? Well, hold it a bit like a pen. Be it your left hand or right hand. Quite simply, hold it like a pen. Two fingers around the neck. Put your thumb around the side here. And then hold the torch at round about a 60, de 60 degree to 70 degree angle to your base vessel with your weld. So if you're welding from left to right or right to left, in my case, I'm going from right to left. Hold the torch at, 60, at about 60 to 70 degree angle. You can go vertical if you need to. And when you strike your arc, maintain your torch angle and just slowly move along the joint you are trying to weld. Okay, you can go to vertically at 90 degrees if you need to, but generally speaking, around about 60 to 70 degree angle in the direction towards you're going to weld, gently bring the torch from one side to the next. Now this is not a hard and fast rule, you angle the torch however you want, what you do not do is hold it at too, too, too shallow an angle such as this. That's when your arc length becomes extremely long, your gas coverage doesn't work and your weld will come out full of porosity, grey, black and it just will not work in the way we intend. Try to keep your TIG torch no more than a quarter of an inch above the weld pool. The higher the torch is above the base metal, again the gas is going to have trouble covering the weld. 
So keep your torch tight, your torch and your tungsten close to the weld pool. Don't go at too shallow an angle. Don't go too far away. And keep it consistent. Keep it smooth. Smoothness and consistency is the key thing about all welding and certainly with, with, with TIG welding. So think torch angle. Think your arc gap. And also think gas coverage. Not too high. Not too shallow. Not too close because you may touch down. And not too far away. We are nearly ready to start welding. I'm just going to do a few practice pieces as demonstration. And to do this, I'm using some 2mm scrap steel and some 1mm stainless steel TIG rods. As part of the preparation process, it will pay dividends to make sure all your materials are as clean as possible. The simplest way to do this is to take some cleaning fluid, like, such as a solvent, dab a bit on some tissue, and just take a moment to make sure everything is degreased and clean. Remove any scale from steel, such as using a sander, for example. And treat your TIG rods in exactly the same way. Make sure they're degreased. Any grease on your TIG rods or your metal will cause your weld to not turn out as nice as it could, such as porosity, or maybe it may just not work out at all. So take your time to prepare, keep it clean. It will make a huge difference and a good result. Remember him? Yep, he's still watching. So remember to look after yourself. Wear a mask, wear some gloves, protect your skin, keep yourself safe. Okay, so this is just going to be a single spot weld onto a piece of scrap metal, just a demonstration. Now I have moved my welding set away from the bench. Reason being, there's a fan running, which you can probably hear in the background, and that will blow air onto my work area. That can also blow the gas away, if you blow the gas away from your weld, that's when your welds go black, grey and all bubbly because there's no shielding gas. So let's just do a small bit of welding, just a little spot and a bit of scrap metal, just to show you how it looks when you strike an arc. Okay, so remember I'm using a foot pedal, a completely remote start. So, put your, put your mask down, hold your torch about a quarter of an inch on the base metal, put your foot in the pedal, Okay, just a nice smooth arc, quarter of an inch of the base metal, torch at around about a 16-70 degree angle. And when you finish your weld, take your foot off the pedal and hold the torch over the weld to let the post gas do its job. Remember the post gas continues shielding the weld from, from the outside air and keeps your tungsten cool as well. Okay, so after a few seconds, move the torch away, and then that is what the result you should have. Here is how it looks through the mask. The torch is a quarter of an inch above the weld pool, and it's all just nice and smooth. Remember, take care to not touch the tungsten down to the weld pool. So this time, we're going to do a small run on our base metal. We are using no filler wire for this. We are simply going to hold the torch at the, ang at the 60 degree angle to 70 degree angle, a quarter to an inch above the base metal. We're going to strike an arc and then we're going to move the torch just from left to right or right to left, whichever hand you may be, and just do a run with no wire. So, let's do that. So, mask now. And we all arc up. Okay, and then slowly move the torch from one side of the metal to the other. Nice and smooth. Keep the angle consistent. Remember, don't go too shallow at an angle. Okay, and then put the pedal. Remember, hold the torch above the weld for a few seconds, let the post gas do its job, cool the tungsten down, cool the end of the weld down. Okay. And let's see how that looks. There we have it. It 
It takes a few seconds to focus here, but here is the view from a filter. Remember, keep your movements nice and smooth throughout. Take your time to practice striking an arc, maintaining the balance of the TIG torch, how to manoeuvre from left to right, and just generally get comfortable with the whole setup. Only when you're comfortable with all that, that should you start thinking about using filler wire. Filler wire is what you use to just create your weld, to be it a fillet, a butt joint, whatever it may be. You need to add filler wire to your weld to make it strong and to hold pieces of metal together. So, tips to give you. First of all, your filler wire is normally in quite long lengths, up to a metre or about three foot. What I always do is take your filler wire and cut it in half a pair of wire cutters. That way you haven't got a long filler rod, which is dangling along in, around in your hand. It can make you go a bit out of balance, it's flopping around, it can be a bit of a hindrance. Make life easier for yourself. So you need to coordinate your TIG torch and your filler wire. So, when you strike your arc with your TIG torch, you create your weld pull and you touch your filler wire into the weld pull, dabbing in a little bit. You then move along slightly, dab your wire in again, move along slightly, dab your wire in, move along, dab, move, dab, move, dab, move, dab, move, dab, and you maintain that rhythm the whole way along. With each dab, you move your torch along probably about one eighth of an inch, not very far at all. That's only a guesstimation, maybe further, maybe be less, depending on your weld style, but that's the, name, the rhythm you need to maintain. Initiate weld pull, dab, move, dab, move, dab, move, dab, move, dab, move. The whole time, you've got to coordinate your torch and your filler wire. Do not let your filler wire touch your tungsten, and do not let your tungsten touch the weld pull. This will take practice, but persevere, you will get it. Here is a closer view of the motions of the filler wire and the TIG torch. Remember, keep your torch at around 60 to 70 degrees off horizontal, but your filler wire needs to be at a shallower angle, below 45 degrees. With each wire dab, you are only just touching the weld pull. Okay, now for a practice piece with the filler wire. That's not bad, not bad at all. A little tip is to move quickly, but not move too slow. Essentially, find a hack medium pace where you're moving fast enough so your welds aren't going dark through too much heat input, but not so slow that you're going so slow your welds turn black. If you imagine you're doing a weld, keep your torch at a nice, smooth, uniform pace. If you move too fast, your weld's not going to look good. If you move too slow, your torch will hinder about in the same place for too long and put too much heat into the weld. That's when your welds go dark. On this weld, I went a little bit slower than I should, hence why it's so dark. So, nice smooth pace, not too fast, not too slow. If your weld's too fast, you will know about it because it will not work. If you go too slow, your welds will be dark. You're better off using slightly more power and moving a bit quicker. Don't let the heat stay in one place for too long. But again, practice, practice, practice. It's all it takes. Here is using filler wire through a filter. It takes a few seconds to focus again, but I hope this gives you an idea of the rhythm you need to maintain. I can't say it enough. Keep it consistent.
So that was my somewhat humble attempt at sharing my skills to help you become a better TIG welder. The rest is now down to you to practice. Keep at it and persevere, you will get it. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a subscribe, like, comment or share. I have many more welding videos coming, so drop a subscribe to not miss. Until then, thank you for watching, thank you for your support and happy welding.